Hey there, and welcome back to another World of Warcraft classic video. Today we're going to be looking at something a little different than my Paladin content. Whenever I'm streaming, I get a lot of new players in my chat, and I hear many of them say the same thing. I don't have a lot of gold. I don't know how to make gold. I don't think I'm going to be able to afford my level 40 mount when I get there. So I decided to do a little bit of research and come up with a way for new players to make some gold. Now, these farms are not going to make you rich, but I think these are a great, great way for new players to establish themselves, save for a mount, and maybe even buy some nice gear on their way to level 40 and beyond. So first we need to look at a location, and as some of you might already be able to tell, I've chosen Darkshore. So, some people might be asking themselves, why are you choosing Darkshore? Nobody likes Darkshore, and you know what? You're right. If we slash who Darkshore, it's me and three other people. Nobody's here. So, that's perfect. Very little competition. Another reason that I picked Darkshore is that it has a coastline. And where there's a coastline, there's Strangle Kelp. Strangle Kelp is an ingredient used for free action potions. These are used by PvPers and Raiders alike at pretty much every level. So, if you can farm these mats, high level people are going to buy them off of you. Especially because they don't want to farm them themselves. So honestly, you can just run up and down the Dark Shore Coast and farm Strangle Kelp and honestly make a few gold off of it just on its own. That's three right there. They're selling for 50 silver to a gold on my server. So just spending a little bit of time going up and down the coast and I've already got almost a stack and a half. On top of that, if you're a fisherman, while you're going up and down the coast, you can also get oily blackmouth. These are also used when making free action potions. And again, high levels really don't want to spend their time fishing because there's more profitable things for them to do. But you as a low level can just come out here, get some strangle kelp, and get some oily black mouth, and start making your own potions. So for me, as a new player, I think herbalism is one of the best ways to start making money at a low level. Aside from that, I would also recommend skinning or mining. This character I have is level 20, and it is a mining herber. I'm doing this mostly for this video, and I will eventually be dropping mining for engineering, just for this character though. So, what's nice is you want to make use of your time even running to a location, and that's what we're doing with the coast of Darkshire, because our actual location of where we're going to go next is in the south, and that is to Rem Travel's Excavation. So, while you're on your way there, you run along the coast, you pick up Stranglethorn Kelp, or sorry, Strangle Kelp, as well as Oily Blackmouth. That way, even your travel time is now profitable. So, I will see you at the excavation site here in just a moment. Alright guys, welcome back to kind of my secret farming spot. I've been a little afraid to kind of make this farm public for the fear that Blizzard might nerf it. So here at Krem Traveler's excavation site, there are golems that spawn here. Now what's interesting about these golems is that they have an incredibly fast respawn rate. I believe that is because this is a spot where you can actually do a quest. And because of that, they made the spawn rate very quick. Now these guys drop coarse stone, which on my server are currently selling between 5 and 8 gold. Now, of course, the other items that they drop, you can either vendor, or the greens that they drop, you can sell as well. What's also nice is that here, you can get an herbing node, and also, there is a mining node that spawns in this pit as well. And we got lucky enough that you are getting the next thing that is so good about Darkshore, and that is Swift Thistle. Swift Thistle is used for Swift Thistle Tea, which rogues use and for swiftness potions which well pretty much anybody can use so i'm not sure exactly on the price of these but i believe they're going for about one gold a piece so not only are you farming coarse stone random greens and things you can pretty much just vendor 
but you are also getting Swift Thistle. So let's see if we can kill a few of these golems and get lucky. To be honest, if you're in your late 20s or early 30s, you can kill these and by the time you're going back to your rotation, more than likely they will have already been respawned and they will spawn infinitely. I've come here on a higher level just to see what kind of gold per hour I can make. And honestly, if I just spend one hour here on a very high level character, you can make around 20 to 30 gold per hour. Which of course, if you're a well-established player, that doesn't sound like a lot of gold. But if you are a new player, 20 to 30 gold per hour is quite a bit, and you can have your mount farmed in about four hours. Another reason that I like this place is again, no one is ever here. Even night elves don't like this place it seems. There's never any competition, nobody's ever farming these golems, nobody's ever farming the strangle kelp, and honestly you pretty much get free reign over the mining and herbing nodes in this area. Also in the south of Darkshore you'll start to see a lot of tin ore nodes. Again, these are great because, well, they have coarse stone. On top of that, currently on my server, bronze bars are selling for 20 to 30 silver a piece. I mean, for a stack of bronze bars, which is not hard to make if you're down here anyways, that's a pretty good profit for a new player. So for me, I would highly recommend going herbing and mining and swapping back and forth or looking up the routes online. Now, the drop rate of the core stone here is not amazing, so what I normally do is I stay in here long enough until the herbing and mining nodes that I've tapped have had a chance to respawn. That way you're not wasting any of your time looking and really not doing anything. If you get good enough at it, you can start timing the respawn times of the herbing and mining nodes along with your killing of the golems. That way you're being as efficient as possible. So I've only been in Darkshore for a pretty short amount of time and I've already been able to collect almost a stack and a half of Strangle Kelp, a few Swift Thistle, some Coarse Stone, some Tin Ore, some Copper Ore, as well as one other thing that drops here that everybody currently wants, and that is Bruiseweed. So, Bruiseweed is currently being made, used in AQ40, which is on Garage 40, to make anti-venom potions. So actually, elixir of potion, sorry, elixir of poison resistance, goodness. So these remove up to four poisons and have no cooldown. You can drink them as fast as you want. So even though Bruiseweed is not hard to get, and you can even buy it from some vendors for less than a silver, they are still in ultra high demand. And even selling, well, I think I sold my last batch for 35 silver per bruise weed. So that's the next thing about Darkshore. It is a very diverse amount of materials that you're farming. You're getting strangle kelp, you're getting oily black mouth, you're getting bruise weed, you're getting swift thistle, coarse stones, tin ore, copper ore. So you're not just relying on one or two items. So again, you can get some random greens you can send to a disenchanter, or some of those greens will actually sell in the auction house for a pretty decent amount. Honestly, cloth items that are of the eagle, leather that is of the monkey, or mail that is of the bear can sell for one or two gold pretty easily, especially weapons. High level players who don't really want to go out and farm are willing to spend a few gold for an alt if it makes the leveling experience easier. So, like I've said, you can pretty much come here on a late level 20 or a low level 30 character and have a very easy time farming these golems as quick as you want. I will admit my warlock is a little bit overgeared for these, but frankly I think any hunter, warlock, mage, or other class that's good at farming will be able to do this with ease. Oh, ha! <laughs> Honestly, this is the first time I've ever seen somebody here aside from me but I think they're just here to do their quest and then they'll be gone. So with that, we'll look around and maybe show off one more spot here in Darkshore that might be useful for you to farm.
We'll see you there. Hello and welcome back to our last location here in Darkshore. We are just east of Aberdeen and you might be asking yourself, well, why this location and why these Moonkin? Well, there are two reasons why these are good things to farm. One is they have a very, very high chance of dropping, what do we get one? Small eggs. So, small eggs right now are not going to be worth very much money. But, seeing as Christmas time is just around the corner, you will need them, or many players will need them, to make cookies for the Christmas event. And look at that, more swift thistle. That was not even planned. So, small eggs will eventually go up in price during Christmas time for the Christmas events. It's another one of those items that higher level players just are not going to want to go out and farm. So, as a low level player, having a nice stockpile of these sitting in your bank early will pretty much be a good investment no matter what. Now, of course, you might not be a low level by the time they might be useful in a few months, but you never know. It's always good to use a little bit of your bank slots to make some money. And here we go. This is the second item that is really good to farm here, and that is Light Feathers. So as you can see from my auctioneer, last seen, they have been selling for around 40 silver. I believe they have dropped a little bit in price, and of course depending on what server you're on and what faction you're on, they're going to go up and down. The reason Light Feathers are worth so much is because mages use them when they're doing their ZG farm, and priests use them as well for floating. So this is again really easy, nice low level minions that you can farm even in your late teens, early 20s. Now again, you're not going to get rich off of doing this, but if you just want an uncontested farm, this is where you can do it. If I'm being completely honest, if you're a horde and you come to Darkshore, you're more than likely be going to be able to farm without anybody bothering you. Just nobody comes here. So I think that's pretty much it for this video. So let's take a quick rundown of all of the different items you can farm here in Darkshore. And honestly, I've only been here working on this video for maybe half an hour. So we'll see what we have in that short amount of time. So in that short amount of time, we've got 33 Strangle Kelp. We have six Swift Thistle. We've got a decent amount of Bruise Weed. Um, the rest of these herbs really don't sell for much. We have two stacks of Copper Ore, two stacks of Tin. We've got some Small Eggs, some Light Feathers, and some Coarse Stone, and a few Greens that we've gotten along the way. Honestly, I have barely spent any time here and already have around, I would say, 20 to 30 gold worth of materials that I could sell on the auction house. Anyway, I hope you found this guide very useful. Again, if you have any questions or you just like to see me stream, I stream every day at 9 p.m. PST. You can see me at twitch.tv slash the Duke of TBC. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And I'll see you guys next time.